I'm going to instruct in downloading a Windows 7 installation ISO from Microsoft or Dell directly and then creating a bootable USB for a UEFI BIOS. Now, since the installation media Microsoft offer is severely outdated, I'm going to instruct in updating it until November 2018 and I'm going to incorporate the necessary driver support for installation on up to six generation Intel hardware. So this is also called Skylake hardware. And for Adele, the latest Dell model which supports Windows 7 is the Optiplex 7040. So this has USB free ports and an NVMe solid state drive and it also has a 6th generation Intel processor. So since the Microsoft website doesn't work very well for Windows 7, we'll need to use the Microsoft Windows and Office ISO download tool. And this is a third party tool made by Jan at hedoc.net. So we'll go to its landing page and we'll launch the tool. So to the right hand side you can select Windows 7 to download the installation ISO from Microsoft and then all you need to do is select your edition and language. I know it doesn't matter what edition you select because we're going to amend the bootable USB to be multi-edition. So we can copy the link and essentially the link is direct to Microsoft servers and it's got a time limited token and Jan's tool generates the time limited token as it would if you had used the Microsoft website if the Microsoft website worked correctly. Jan has also recently updated his tool to support Dell products so basically we can download the image that Dell offer. Now Dell essentially offer a vanilla Windows 7 installation ISO they have minimum driver support for up to six generation Intel hardware on Dell systems, but they've only updated the professional edition. So we'll download this professional edition ISO. And as I said, once again, we're gonna convert it to be a multi-edition installation ISO. So the image is the same on pretty much all the Dell models. So we'll just select the latest Dell model, which is the Optiplex 7040. So this time the link is direct to Dell servers and there's a time limited authorization code. Okay, so now that the two installation ISOs have downloaded, I'm going to use a tool called Rufus and we can use Rufus first of all to check the installation ISO checksums. Because these are large downloads, we should check the checksums before trying to make bootable media. So let's launch Rufus and let's load the Dell Windows 7 Professional Reinstallation ISO and check its checksums. So we'll get the MD5 and the SHA256. So Yan's tool actually gives the SHA256. But if you're unsure, just copy and paste the MD5 into Google and it'll find it if your installation ISO exists. If you get a unique um, MD5, then your installation ISO is basically corrupt and you should re-download it. Okay, so the next step is the partition scheme. So if you're using a computer manufactured in 2012, to 2016, you'll want to use the GPT partition scheme. If you're using a computer manufactured before 2011, you'll need to use the MBR partition scheme. If you're using a computer manufactured between 2011 and 2012, you'll need to check whether your computer has a UEFI boot. And if it does, then you use the GPT partition scheme. And if it doesn't, then you use the MBR partition scheme. Because we're going to update the install.wim and it's going to exceed four gigabytes, we'll need to change the file system to NTFS. So by default, the file system is FAT32, which has an upper limit of four gigabytes. 
and using NTFS means we need to disable secure boot but that's not an issue because Windows 7 doesn't support secure boot and we would need to disable secure boot anyway. So I'm going to change the volume label and just call it M17 so I know this is the Microsoft installation ISO and so I know it's Windows 7. And now I'm going to insert my 16 gigabyte SanDisk USB flash drive. So my USB flash drive has nothing on it, so I'll select OK to begin the format. You'll obviously need to make sure that you have nothing on your USB flash drive before doing this. So now it's just a case of waiting on Rufus to create the USB flash drive. And when it's done, it will say ready. Because we're using the file system NTFS, we will also get a warning about secure boot telling us we'll need to disable it post installation. So we can just select close and we can close down Rufus. Okay, so we have a Windows 7 installation USB now, but it's severely outdated from 2011. So what we want to do is open up our system drive so we're going to go direct to C and we're going to slipstream the installation media and to do this slipstream we'll need to create three folders we're going to create a drivers folder an IE11 folder and an updates folder so if we have folders of the same names we'll need to delete these before proceeding and let's go to the bootable USB and now open up the sources folder so in the sources folder, we're interested in the two files that we use for installation. The boot.wim, which we use to boot from the bootable USB, and install.wim, which we use to actually install Windows 7. So for the boot.wim, we need to add drivers, and for the install.wim, we need to add drivers and updates. So the list of updates we need are available here. So we've got seven hotfixes. And we've got two additional hotfixes in this Gigabyte Windows USB tool. So let's download them all. And let's download this USB tool. Okay, so last time I went to this website, all the categories were expanded. So I just need to hunt for it. So it's listed under Utilities, and we're looking for Windows USB Download Tool. Okay, so in the Downloads folder, we'll create a folder called Updates, and we'll copy all these hotfixes to it. And let's go ahead and extract this Windows USB tool by Gigabyte. So we're not actually going to use their tool. We're just going to take the hotfixes from it. So we need the two hotfixes and because we're using 64-bit windows, we're going to take the x64 ones. So that's us got our nine hotfixes and we've created our updates folder. We now need to create an IE11 folder and for this we need IE11 as a cab file. So we'll just copy that into the IE11 folder. So now we need USB 3.0 drivers and F6 SATA drivers or storage controllers. And when we download these, they're actually in the form of applications, which is useless for what we actually want just now. So what we're going to do is extract them. And we're going to extract the USB 3 ones in a folder called USB 3. Now, if we open up this extracted folder, what we want to do is have a look through it and we want the drivers. So let's create a new folder called drivers and we want to get the x64 drivers and we want to copy them directly into the drivers folder. Okay, so let's now extract the storage controller drivers. So I'm just going to extract them to a folder called F6 SATA and once again, let's explore this folder and get the drivers. And we want the 
Windows 7 64-bit drivers. Okay, so now we've got the drivers folder, the IE11 folder and the updates folder. And we want to copy them directly to the C drive. And the contents in the three folders should look as follows. Okay, so what we need now is the scripts to actually perform this slipstream. So there's actually two links here. There's scripts for the Dell installation ISO and there's scripts for the Microsoft installation ISO. And for the Dell one, I actually created another script to just update the professional edition, which may save some time if people only want to use the professional edition. So let's have a look at the scripts. So what we can do is right click them and select edit. And then for some reason we need to select run, even though we're only opening them in notepad. So the script looks like that. And essentially the difference in the Dell one is we need to add less things to the professional edition because it's already had some of these things added by Dell. Okay, so I'm using the Microsoft Installation ISO, so I'll use the script designed for the Microsoft Installation ISO. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to the control panel, hardware and sound and power options. And I want to change my power plan, so basically the computer never goes to sleep. And because I'm screen recording this, I don't want to turn the display off either. So I'll select save changes. So now I can run the script without risk of the computer going to sleep and hence cancelling the script. So if we right click the script and select run as administrator, uh, we'll need to accept the user account control prompt. We'll see the command prompt show. So the first command basically tells us to look at the boot.wim and install.wim and so we can actually see it it has a pause so we can have a look at the boot.wim and install.wim and then we can press any key such as the spacebar to continue okay so what it's doing is first of all creating a folder called boot2 and to boot2 it's extracting the second index of the boot.wim so this is used to boot from the bootable USB and we need to add drivers to it so it can recognize the USB free ports as soon as the installation media boots. Without these drivers, you'll get stuck on the first screen and you'll not be able to use your keyboard and mouse. Okay, once it's added these drivers, it saves the changes and commits the changes to the second index of the boot.wim. It then deletes this folder and then creates the folder home basic. So to the folder home basic, we extract the first index of the install.wim. And to this, we add the um, Windows updates and we add Internet Explorer 11 and we add the hotfixes for NVMe solid state drives. We add the drivers for the storage controllers and the USB ports. And then we commit the changes. And then we delete the folder and we continue on to the second index of the install.wim, which should be home premium. And we carry out the same slipstream and then we move on to the third index of the install.wim, which will be professional, and we carry out the same substream. And then we move on to the fourth index of the install.wim, which will be ultimate, and we carry out the same slipstream. So once we've slipstreamed all the indexes of the install.wim, the folders to the right hand side, so Home Basic, Home Premium, Professional and Ultimate should all disappear. And 
the information of the boot.wim and install.wim should display once again. So basically what we need to do is press any key to exit and then once we've done this we can open up the bootable USB and look at the sources folder. So here the two files that we updated are boot.wim and install.wim so we can rename them to bootold.wim and installold.wim or we can just go ahead and delete them. Okay, so I'll rename them in this case, but I normally delete them actually. And now what we want to do is copy over the updated versions. And you'll notice that the updated versions are much larger in size and the install.wim in particular is larger than 4 gigabytes. Okay, so we're also going to have a look at one other file called the ei.cfg and we're going to open this one time only using notepad and we'll see it's a very basic file and what it does is it selects the addition of windows. So I don't want it to select the addition of windows and I want to select the addition of windows from the install.wim. So I'll delete this ei.cfg file outright and during installation I'll get a ballot box asking me what edition of Windows 7 I want to install. So systems pre-built by major OEMs such as Dell, HP or Lenovo that ship with Windows 7 activate using OEM system locked pre-installation. Systems from the major OEMs which ship with Windows 10 Pro or Windows 8 Pro also have downgrade rights to Windows 7 Pro and the downgrade rights activate using OEM system locked pre-installation. So I'm also going to download the files necessary for OEM system locked pre-installation and copy them to the bootable USB. So a lot of people misunderstand this OEM system locked pre-installation. So basically how it works is the major OEMs such as Dell, HP or Lenovo certify their hardware for Windows 7 and include in the BIOS or UFI BIOS a system license internal code of 2.1. If the system does not have the system license internal code of 2.1 then the OEM system locked pre-installation is rejected and you'll be prompted to input a retail product key to activate. So we now have up to date Windows 7 installation media. So in another tutorial video I will demonstrate using it to clean install Windows 7 on a Dell Optiplex 7040 which contains an NVMe SSD and an Intel 6th generation Skylake processor. I will also activate Windows 7 on the system using OEM system locked pre-installation because this hardware was shipped with Windows 10 Pro which has downgrade rights to Windows 7 Pro.